We start with our top story with South Africa's general election just two weeks away. Some polls suggest the governing African National Congress, ANC, could get less than 50% of the vote for the first time in 30 years. Mounting criticism of the party that led the fight against apartheid under the late Nelson Mandela has chipped away at its support, raising the possibility of a coalition government. I asked David Monda, political science professor at City University of New York, if the polls indicating the demise of the ANC are correct and if he believes there is a cohesive opposition emerging in South Africa to take on the ANC. I think a number of things have happened, but I think the biggest challenge for uh, ANC has been erosion of uh, public trust in the ANC as a uh, a party that can deliver on its promises, that's number one. But I think the second element of it is uh, people have uh, lost faith in uh, its capacity to govern because it's now been over 30 years since democracy in, uh, in the early 90s. Things have gone from bad to worse. Uh, you are right, Professor. You know, the stubbornly high unemployment, which hit uh, almost 32 percent last year, persistent economic inequalities, corruption allegations and frequent power cuts have reduced its popularity. But the ANC says it is working to fix these problems. Yeah, it can say that. But uh, the, the, as they say, the, the truth of the pudding is in the eating. People need delivery on these promises. So part of the you mentioned there, uh, part of the uh, what they call load shedding, the power cut, have been connected to corruption, lack of investment in the public utilities, in ESCOM which is uh, one of the largest power utilities in South Africa over many years. And the other one has been um, state capture. There was a whole commission run a few years ago, which so showed massive corruption, particularly within the Zoom administration. But uh, thirdly, we cannot also discount um, what we'd call white flight. So a lot of the white minority uh, who have become fearful of a new black government, a lot of them have left the country. People with talent have moved to Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and the U.S. And then, of course, this level of high uh, inequality, even if there's some small level of economic growth, because South Africa has the highest levels of income inequality, a lot of the benefits of any type of economic growth will be slow, and they'll usually only benefit the higher echelons of the economic food chain. So these are multiple problems that, that South Africa has faced. And I might add in conclusion also on the continent and also in the world, uh, South Africa's soft power diplomacy has really been hurt with the xenophobic violence towards uh, other black Africans from the rest of the continent who've been attacked. Over, over the years, I think this has really dented South Africa's image, not only on the continent, but also around the world. And Professor, the main opposition Democratic Alliance, DA, uh, taking advantage of ANC's weaknesses, the ones you just enumerated, says the country is in crisis, but it wants to liberalize the economy, including a move towards greater privatization. It has pledged to create two million new jobs. The rate of uh, violent crime, uh, they want to reduce it by half. Let's talk a little about the uh, opposition here. Yeah, so I, I think... Uh... Part of the challenge with South Africa now has been uh, the dominance of the ANC over over the years. They had almost a super majority in uh, in Parliament, so I think this has made uh, the ANC very lethargic. But when you look at the opposition, uh, they don't have enough power to be able to significantly ch uh, challenge the ANC. The DA that you mentioned, the main opposition party, is very strong in the Western Cape. Uh, region of, of South Africa, but they're not very strong in the rest of the country. And there's also a big perception that the Democratic Alliance, the DA, is, uh, you know, is a white party. So there's a kind of a phobia around that, which doesn't really uh, lend to, you know, them getting a lot of support. The other parties, uh, um, like the EFF, uh, like the Pan-Africanist Congress, uh, they're small, they're very fractured, and ideologically they don't sit very well with the DA. 
So I think this is another challenge for South Africa, the fact that uh, you do not have a, a united, uh, cohesive opposition that can take on the ANC. The Democratic Republic of Congo held a funeral on Wednesday for the victims of recent bombings at several sites for internally displaced persons in the country's eastern province of North Kivu. On May 3rd, at least five lockets fell in under around four IDP camps in the outlying neighborhoods of Goma, the capital of North Kivu province. According to the provincial government, the toll rose to 35 dead and 37 injured. The Minister of Social Affairs, Humanitarian Actions and National Solidarity Modesto Mutinga Motushayi reaffirmed the DRC government's will and determination to spare no effort to restore peace in the eastern part of the country. May this morning awaken in us a dynamic of national solidarity. Be more than assured that you are not alone in this difficult, disturbing, and trying ordeal, he said. The UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs warned last Tuesday that the risk of further shell explosions cannot be ruled out as one of the fallen shells remains unexploded and there is an escalation of hostilities in areas surrounding IDP camps. The site bombed last Friday are located on the axis between Goma and the town of Saki, one of the epicenters of hostilities between the DRC military and the March 23rd movement rebels considered the last barrier to Goma. Humanitarian access to IDP sites along the Goma Sake axis has been further restricted due to persistent fighting, the UN OCHA said. The DRC government has blamed the attacks on M23 rebels who have taken control of some parts of North Kivu province. The UN peacekeeping mission in the DRC, known as MONUSCO, has called on all parties to take appropriate measures to reduce risks to the protection of civilians and to maintain humanitarian access. Life changes just open the door. One thing's certain, I'll always be.